I'll go get emotional now. But yeah, it, it took me. I ended up. I lost me. Lost my mind. Um, got sectioned. Avoided jail. Luckily enough. Um, yeah, nearly died. Paramedics took me out. Um, had a seizure. Just loads of. Ended up in a psychiatric ward for you know, a few months. Just literally whirlwind of it. In such a short time, like when I was when I was getting getting clean. I just, I went through everything. Killer, killer, oh, 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. After the races. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller podcast coming to you live out on location. Oh my god. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Before I forget, Kellervision app in effect for all of those that know. We're going to the north, we're going deep north to the, the, the Vegas of Britain, or some would like to think. Knowing full well, however, that the undertones. Of, uh, of, of what really goes down and amongst these environments, two very different worlds. And one that really, really encapsulates that and personifies that is with a good friend of mine, graffiti writer. Allow me to introduce to you Second one inside the place. How are you, my brother? How's it going? I'm good. Good. Thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, it's good to be good to be back. I mean, back for the first time, I might add. Back for into... the first time. Yeah. <laughs> we won't go. We won't go into too much again. Let's get that up there. We want to hear every nuance and what you got to say. How you been? You been alright? Yeah, I've been good. Tired today. Painted a festival over the weekend, so straight back through the night and then straight into here. So yeah, just on it, on, on it. it. So for those of you who don't know, graffiti writer extraordinaire, visual artist, spray can artist, street artist, very versatile in his field. Second one came up from a very early time in hip hop and graffiti and has transcended with one hell of a fucking story. And it's one that I really, really want us to get into because I think it mirrors, bro. I think it mirrors a lot of what people have gone through in their lives, particularly yeah. when it comes to idle time in the creative space that people have inside their heads wouldn't you agree yeah it's kind of like it's a bit of a crazy one especially from from like um from an outside mm. on the outside looking in mm. so i'm kind of used to telling the story now but yeah it's, it could be a bit of a shocker it all started with graph though didn't it back in the day yeah yeah that was the interest that was the um back in the day going down going down the, the local tracks and seeing some some of the pieces down there mm. and Wondering where it all come from, how it arrived there, you know, through the night, and then uh, that's how I started. Started. That's how I got into it. Started painting. So, what age was this? How old were you at this time? I think I was about twelve, maybe. That sways three years because I can't really remember. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I think about twelve, and I went down there. Came across this, as I've said to you before, it's like it was like Disney World. It was like these characters and all this writing, this bright writing. And I was I was like hooked straight away, and then um, found out about the book Spray Can Art. Hold tight, Spray Can Art, you know it, dude. <laughs> that was it, Subway Art, and then and that was it. That was the Bible for the next five years. It's a running, it's a running gift that comes up every single episode on like Killer Killer podcast. It always feels like. The DNA of everything that every writer does, it, it literally is those two books, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. It has a lot, lot to answer for. Yeah, in a, in a, in a good way. Mm. Yeah, it was back in the library, yeah. borrowing it from the library and extended loans like 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Still <laughs> another the, one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what was the scene like in Blackpool back in the day? Uh, well, when I was painting, there was there was no one. There was just me. Yeah. Um, Which is bonkers when you think about the the lineage of how far graph goes now or oh, i thought it was just me um because i think I, when I, I stopped painting about 16 mm. um so i was i was only doing it for a couple of years like, so i did, I did like well, 13 to 16 youth clubs um bridge you know mm. you earn your earn your stripes kind of thing yeah. but i got to a point where there was no i couldn't find anyone painting everyone was so so elusive at the time um there were some amazing pieces coming up, but I, I, was, I wasn't clued up on where they were coming from, who was doing them. So I couldn't kind of progress. So I was literally standard caps, just doing what you, what you do, bubble letters. Um, 
Yeah, I couldn't progress, so I got, I got a bit frustrated with it, so I kind of I kind of stopped for a while. Do you think that would be the case with a lot of these? Because, like I said at the start, for those from outside the UK, Blackpool is p- predominantly tourist-heavy. Got a lot of gay, uh, transgender. Pocket scenes kind of mirrors, I guess, a lot of what Brighton and Bristol have That's to similar. offer in terms of communities. But there isn't a lot... There isn't... Correct me if I'm wrong. There isn't a, a huge... Um, focus on art as a whole outside of music here right there's definitely a lot of things like sizzling simmering simmering mm, that's simmering. the word yeah simmering um, there's, a, there's a few places like the Hive the Hive Cafe like as for artists as a, as a community um, Dirty Blondes which we're at right now hold tight Dirty Blondes Dirty Blondes yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a little bit of a hub yeah, yeah. creative definitely music for you know, sure open mics and that um, where else is there? There's, there's, there's a few things happening. Stand Sea and Spray event from way back in, well, early 2012, mm. 2011, 2012, I think it started. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm boiling in it. Yeah. Right That's why I keep doing keep this. It I'm hard. Not, I'm not, I've not got a Twitch, I'm just doing we this. Keep it hard on a killer, killer podcast, <laughs> yeah. you know the Making deal. me sweat. <laughs> yeah, trust me, we're getting some heavy shit. A yeah, bit yeah, with. that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, Stand Sea and Spray event, that was, that's kind of what, what pushed me, because I, I volunteered in that event. Um, and, and when got, was this? When was the Sansi spray event? I think the first one I volunteered in, when I volunteered, it was 2013, I think. Summer 2013. 2013. So it's been going for a bit, huh? Yeah, but it kind of got, it got... It stopped after a while. It stopped about four or five years ago. Was that some of the pieces... I see some of the pieces that... Is that remnants yeah. to these, this yeah. era? Yeah, the pieces around... Yeah, the, 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 the big pieces around town, like... Yeah. Because I've got to say, man, like, there's so much dead wall around here. You could really kill it. That's, that's all I do. When I drive around, everyone's looking at, like, cars and houses and things, and mm. I'm just looking at walls. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, you know the, 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 the G word, the gentrification word, like, for graph anyway, just to have, like, some blockbusters come over in some of... So much, you know, disused buildings here. Yeah. You could really go to... You bring, t- you're bringing it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Only bringing it over here. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you know what you're doing, Blackpool. So there is a wall. Um, there used to be Mozfest. Moz, Moz uh, a friend of mine who I, I started painting with again, mm. 2013, 14. Um, he set up a, a festival called Mozfest. Like mainly, well, mainly writers. Um, yeah, and he 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 brought quite quite a few writers in. Um, nice. And there was he had a wall under the old police station, Bonnie Street car park. Uh, that was that was a good day because it, it needed something because that sandstone spray was. Very street art, mm. um, and I'm not into all this divide, but you know what I mean. That catered for it, it, it had graffiti artists as well, but then Moz had his little thing, so he was bringing it, bringing it for the writers. Which, which, like I said, I, I like to just keep it, keep it across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely room for for more. Do you have to? Do you have to? Like, I think there is a balance, especially because the, the the general public of Blackpool. They're so transient because of the tourist thing. I guess you've got to kind of keep your graph reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so trying people to... people get it. Yeah, I'm trying to think whether it's... Yeah, because it's like street art. It's like accepted on the... On, you know, if you've got someone, say, kind of paint the wall with like a, a character, yeah. or people, you know, it's more acceptable, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the graph, which is the roots... Which started me. I think it'd be good to have a, a bit of both, and, and which, which hopefully in the future there will be. Yeah, know. for sure. Well, yeah, right. Who are, who else is out there at the moment? Anyone that you could, you know, crew wise, people that are doing doing stuff, just so that we're up to speed here. I think, I think there's, there's, there's some people going around. I mean, there's people come over from Preston. There's some good writers from Preston come over. Mm. There is some good local lads who, who go down and do a bit. Um, some of the some of the kind of, kind of secret spots. Which were secret, but aren't secret. <laughs> um, not anymore. Like those classic secret spots. <laughs> yeah, the classic know. secret spots. Like, it's like surf spots where everyone knows and it's just crowded, but it's secret. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's... Um, I don't know, that like H, H2I crew used to come over and paint LSA. Um, it's going back, this is when I, I started painting again. So, But you don't... I don't. People don't really come over anymore, not in, in crews, do yeah. productions. Mm-hmm. No. But uh, there's de- there's definitely some uh, some room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, there's loads of there's loads of spots. I can yeah. imagine back in the day. I mean, having such a big influence like hip hop and graf- and graffiti being incorporated with it, and the tourist theatrical side to Blackpool. What was there? Was there a lot of hip hop outlets? Was there a lot of things that were going on that were visible from a cultural perspective on that? 
I didn't see much of actually. I was kind of blind to it because I was like a, I used to call myself OMB, like one man band. I just did everything on my own, so I never really saw that. And everyone, I think, more. I'm, how old am I? Forty two now, so it's more like you know late nineties. I was doing things on my own. It became more of a trance thing. So I was in like the, the rave, mm. rave kind of scene. I, I'm, there was stuff going on, but I think it was just just before just before I kind of got involved. Yeah, that was more more of a bigger bigger thing. I think there's more. There's, there's things happening now. Like, is it breaking convention? Mm. If it was. Yeah, that's that's come back to Blackpool. That's you know, uh, bring, brings a bit with it. But back in the day, I can't really say what was around. The raving thing was your thing, wasn't it? You got yeah, into it. yeah. <laughs> I know where we're going with this now. Yeah. <laughs> Set myself up. Yeah, it was it. Yeah, I, I used to like going out and um, getting messy, so to speak. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. After that was after. Obviously, I was painting, and then I discovered the club scene. So things took a, took a bit of a turn. So classic, man. Like, everyone says that there's this, there's this sweet spot where it goes from, like, yeah, I'm a graph writer, and then all of a sudden, rave comes around, and it's like, all of a sudden, the cans get dropped, and now I'm, like, raving. It's all about the music, yeah. yeah. And the yeah. girls. And the... Okay, yeah, 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 that's it. And it, was, and it became, yeah, became a, a thing. Then suddenly you've got no time because your weekends are all, yeah. all done that. You go from, like, painting new clubs to just, to just getting messy in nightclubs for, like, for many, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone kind of across the board, but yeah. Um, and then there's the, the the writing and the the sketching. Everything just kind of goes out the window because you because you you're picking up your head for the next five days, and then it's weekend again. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a washing machine. Yeah. That um, that being said, you took a very different sort of journey, didn't you? In from from what was in from inception, the graph thing, the creative thing, that 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 lifestyle kind of took you on a different kind of journey, didn't it? Uh, of, of a course that went, that started in Raveland. And ended up in, 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 in hell. Yeah. <laughs> I went from like the rave scene to people smoking weed. It's mm. kind of, I'm not going to, you know, glorify anything, but smoking, smoking weed to come down from like the rave scene. Mm. Um, I didn't do any of that, but then I found something else and that was my kind of, I was introduced to something, you know, my own doing, and then, uh, and then took a took a kind of, sh- yeah. of went down the wrong tracks. What does that do yeah. for your creativity? So that was that just just killed it. Yeah, there was there was nothing there. I remember um, fast forward a bit. I remember going to a rehab, and I got they, they said, <coughs> excuse me, they said um, do what you used to do, you know, get writing and doing stuff. So I, I got a pencil and paper and started sketching. They took it off me. So I was like, right, okay, got another one, started sketching, they took that off me. And I'd only been in there, I think I'd done a detox and I was in a rehab, and I'd been in there like five days, and they kept taking my pen and paper off me. Why? That, because that, that's what I used to do before, you know, before the draw. That was, my, what, that was me, mm. you know, sketching, messing around, drawing all the time. And then when they took that from me, I didn't really know what I was meant to do. Mm. So, so I ended up leaving and then going back on the, on the, on the stuff. But that was, yeah, the, the creativity. Every time... I kind of got straight. I was straight back to pen and paper, or pencil and paper. Mm. But um, but yeah, it was it was a bit of a because I couldn't understand why they were taking the, st- the stuff off me. But it was so I'd interact. I wasn't kind of isolating. But that's what that's what I did. That was my thing. I suppose because oh. they would deny you the creative outlet of something it's, that you were yeah. so used to doing. I think it, I think for some people that works, and I think it's trial and error because everyone individual, everyone's different. So for me. I think it would have been better if you left me with the pen and paper, mm. pencil and paper. But you don't know, things might have been. That was nine, I think I was 19 then. So this, so we were talking, so like you say, you're, you're 42 now. So we're talking about, you were, you were really young when you were... A lifetime ago, yeah. Yeah, you... I, I, I got, I started, started, I got into like hard stuff, I think it was 17. When you say yeah. hard, you, what, what yeah, were you talking about? Yeah, heroin, crack. Yeah. Yeah. Combination yeah. of both. Yeah, heroin, first of all, for that, and then you can't, that became a habit, obviously. And then it, was, then it was the crack for kind of a bit of a luxury. So it's like, because what, it was, I explain it, you wake up, so I'm going to use my hands now, you wake up, normal people wake up on this level. Yeah. You get a habit, and... Which is a middle, to, for those listening and watching, this is a middle level. No, normal people, Normal yeah. level, yeah. Normal, whatever that is. So you wake up here, and then... This hand's level, by the way, but it's not. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. Micro. So you're waking up here, yeah. and then um, once you get a habit, you're waking up here. Which is you have, to have 
your gear to be here. To get back up again. Yeah, so after a bit, it gets boring just trying to get normal. Back and forth, back yeah, and forth, so up and down, so up and down. Waking up there, getting normal, and if you take a bit extra, you're getting high. Yeah, yeah, so that's where you were getting first of all. So to get to there, you've got to take double the dose, which is you know self-explanatory. Then crack was introduced, you know, introduced around here a bit later to me. Yeah. You know, maybe about two year, a year, two years later. Mm. And then that was like... If I had enough money to get the gear and get smashed, I get to that level where I wanted to be, and then it's looking for it's like that's something else, an extreme, right? I want something else, so I want to get up here, yeah, and then I want to get take the gear to cut. So it's just literally, it's just up, down, it's highs and lows for 14 years. It's funny you say that because yeah, I explained a, a similar situation with him and heroin, and the, the, the constant chase that he felt like he. He was, had subscribed to himself too and couldn't stop doing it. It became a point that he just didn't want to get ill. Yeah, that's it. Well, you, you're waking up just, just, to, to, just to function. That's yeah. it. You're, you're taking the gear just to function. Um, and, if you, and if you're lucky, you're getting smashed. That's it. You get a good batch. You get lucky. You get, that's, that's what you're going for. But it, it just becomes, it's just what you know. It's just ingrained. Yeah. You just, it just, and every day it's just a cycle. Every day. With Blackpool... And this is only from an observer's point of view, you understand, and big up all my Blackpool crew. Um, because I know this, is, this, this, this comes from a position that is very much outside of the social bubble. But on the surface, coming to a place like this, it's almost like the main strip by the sea. The Golden Mile. The Golden Mile is lovely. It's got all the lights and everything, but just like all these places, you and you step back behind the curtain onto that second or third parallel road that runs alongside it. When you get behind the curtain, it's yeah. a very different. It's a mask. Yeah. Explain, explain the environment for people that aren't familiar. Yeah, I, I think it's just like it's, it's all kind of sugar coated along the front, and then you, you like you say you step back, um, it's probably like a hundred meters, two hundred meters, and then it's like central area. I'm not going to go into too much, you know. Obviously, respectful of people, the people who were there, but it's kind of it's been things are being done now. There's 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 things in the pipeline like it's it's going to get re regenerated. Um, but yeah, it's it's quite quite a deprived quite um quite a deprived area. It's it's totally totally it's like yin and yang. Yeah, you know the all the money and the gold, the the kind of well kept front, and then behind it like all the new sea wall as well, and then behind it it's like just empty shops, empty buildings, just yeah, derelict. Yeah, yeah, not not a good way. Poverty. And if you live it, and you were there, and you you're familiar with it, and and it's your that's your world, that's it, and, and that's not me taking anything away from it. But I do feel, I'm sure a lot of locals of this area will re hear, hear this and it will resonate that the government just don't do anything to support people, businesses, or anything around here of any notable to to, to see something physically change. Yeah, I I, I can't be too, I'm not too up on it now, but I'm. I'm sure there's things, uh, things have, you know, it's been, it's been talked about subject for a while. It was, I think it's become now, it's been talked about that much. That you can't, you can't, you can't like turn the other cheek now. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, I think I'm sure they're trying to turn Blackpool into some kind of, into a, give it a city status as well. No, that's great. Which yeah. that wouldn't kind of help. For sure. If it was, if it was in that, in shedding that light. As long um, as it's not actually, that's crazy. I know. Yeah. Is it not going to have a, do you not going to have a, it's a, a chapel or something, a church, no, a church. You need a cathedral. A cathedral, sorry, sorry, yeah. we've got a church. Build yourself a cathedral, cathedral, you've got yourself a city. That's the word, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. the despair, that's the thing. What was the life like for you as, a, as, as an addict at that time of Blackpool, being the way that it was and the way that you were? Like, I, I, I live on that kind of the outskirts, so I had to come into, into town and, and like the surrounding areas to get, get my stuff. Um, I didn't really see... I didn't really see anything because, as, as you see, as an addict, as a, as a, especially like a heroin addict, you, you just, you've head, your head's down. You literally, you've got a phone box, you've got a score, you're picking your stuff up, you're going home. Mm. And that, that's it. Sometimes there's, a, there's a, a cluster of people in the same area waiting for the same person, you know, it's, and it's just, it just became... A, it just became... How can I explain? It just became a routine. It's just a routine. Yeah. Coming to Blackpool, didn't see Blackpool for what it is. All, and I know, now, obviously, being straight for, for 10 years... People, I see what people saw in me, and I see the same, like, you know, people who are a bit lost doing the same things that I was doing. Do you know, mm. like, head down, phone box, dealer, mm. back home, whatever they're up to. And, it, and it's, yeah, it's like, but when you're in the cycle, when you're in the, in the, in the goldfish bowl, 
you just don't see it. You think you're invisible, but it's so obvious, you know what I mean? And Is it really? So there's, an, there's a, a cloak over you that you think is normal and no one sees you? You're in denial. You're in denial because like the, the, the gear or whatever your substance is puts your invisible cloak on. You mm. know, that's it. But you, you, don't, you don't really give a shit about mm. what anyone's doing. You just... What anyone thinks, you just head down and you get it. Because the last thing in your mind is what people think when you're trying to get that last quid together to get your tenner because they won't let you off, you know. Mm. It's like you're just, you're just focused on just getting, getting your stuff and, and, and getting a hit before you start rattling. How far did, it, how far did this physically, emotionally take you? The, the, <laughs> west. <laughs> really, West? Yeah. And yeah. not Kanye West, do you understand? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it took me to some dark places, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll go get emotional now, but yeah, it, it took me. I ended up. I lost me, lost my mind. Um, got sectioned, avoided jail. Luckily enough, um, yeah, nearly died. Paramedics took me out. Um, had a seizure. Just loads of. Ended up in a psychiatric ward for you know, a few months. Just literally whirlwind of it. It's in such a short time, like when I was when I was getting getting clean. Yeah, I just I went through everything, went through the mill. I mean, and the years leading up to it as well. But the the main part was the, the last three months. Yeah, really. What, yeah. what was that last three months like? Yeah, I got straight. Um, came off, um, came off like a lot of methadone. Like some people don't, you know, it takes two years to come off the amount I was on. I think I was on. I think the day I went in, I took like one hundred and eighty mil. I was prescribed mm. like I think ninety. I took one hundred and eighty mil. Wow. And then and it was a two week thing, but I was so adamant on getting straight. That I, I cut myself. I thought I was being clever, and I've seen other people do it, and I cut myself down quicker. And once they give you a daily dose, if you refuse the rest of it, they've got to tip it away because it's been allocated to you. So mm. you've got to get rid of it, obviously, because it has to be accounted for. Yeah. So I'm cutting down. I'm cutting down, and all the stuff like you're doing amazing, but we're a bit worried. And I'm like, no, I'm 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 cool. And then um, this is bearing in mind I, I was coming off. Uh, I'm not trying to. Put it up there, but it's yeah, I've got Valium as well. Like, I think 100 mil a day. I can't remember how many bags are like here and and crack as well, which is you know, the psychotic part. Your um, mind was just been fluffy with so many ups and downs and inside outs. Yeah, but I thought I was on it. I thought, I was, <laughs> really, I thought I was like, yeah, you know, like, did you ever eat? Was there any time to eat or drink? Like, I remember mum, like, mum's kind of stuck with me, we've got to stay that, but. Um, I remember my mum always, always stuck in my head. She goes, you've got to eat, you've got to, you know, if you're not doing anything else and you're not treating yourself well, you know, you're not looking after yourself, you've got to eat because that's, you know, that's, that's your, you know, you need it, you know, you need that to survive. Did so she I, know that you were on all this? Yeah, you couldn't, you, I had to, I moved back, I was at my mum's place and she like, she, it was just so obvious in the end. In the end, yeah, it was just, it was just out there. Really? Every, I couldn't, you couldn't hide what, I, everyone knew. It was kind of like, every, everyone had washed their hands of me. Really? Less, one, 99%, yeah. So it got to that place, man. Yeah, dark place. Yeah. Wow. wow. So that those last few months were key to getting out of this cycle. Yeah, it was. It was make or break. <coughs> um, what was the What was the tipping point where you were like, okay, I've got to go in. I've got. To I don't. I've done five, six. I've done about seven detoxes. I've done two, three detoxes abroad. Um, over the, this is over fourteen years. Yeah. I've done five. Five inpatient detoxes, two, three, two or three rehabs. I can't remember now. It's mm. like a like a lifetime ago. Two part two rehabs, and um, I, everything I learned, I learned in a place in a place in Lancaster in, in a rehab. Even though I messed up, that was two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, I think it was, and I did, um, I think I did nine months in there. Nine, I think it was nine months. Yeah, and um, everything I learned, I got all the tools there. But I hadn't had enough, and it was, and I didn't go back to the gear. I went straight out, straight to the clubs, because it was the, that was that's what I used to love, you know, taking pills and getting out there and getting dancing. Mm. I, was, that, I used to love it. I can't dance, I can't <laughs> dance for, for, for toffee without, <laughs> without taking anything. So that, if, if you catch me now, I'm just at the side of a glass of orange. But um, but the you know the music, just following the music, um, and then uh, same again, same scenario. I went to a, went to a place, um, went to this this big deal that someone put on, came back, everyone went home. I was like, right everyone's doing their own thing everyone kind of dealing with mm. whatever they've took and I just went straight and scored again that was it straight to what you know and then it was a cycle again anyway I did that after that rehab I did two more detoxes flew to Turkey cold turkey in Turkey <laughs> <laughs> like you do and then uh, came back and then the last time um, 
I just had enough. Every, I was kind of kept it consistent. Mm. Um, I was just using just to get by, and I was just, I just, I just kind of surrendered. I just was like, right, it's time for change. And I had a niece. I had a niece who was turning one, and that made me, you know, mm. it's not about me anymore. Mm. So, I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. it again then. Yeah. So <laughs> it's uh, yeah, because things got real then. You know, I've not got my own kids, but that's that's the closest thing. Mm. Um, so I just thought, yeah, you know, it's not fair on them. Yeah. Not to well, two two of them now. So yeah, I guess seeing that the thought of them seeing you. Be anything short of the the, 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 uncle, the uncle, yeah. yeah Someone yeah. to look up to, hope. Well, now, yeah, yeah. But um, but back then, yeah, it was. I wasn't anyone to kind of mm. kind of shine about. <laughs> I still find it baffling how they didn't at the time allow you to take your sketchbooks. You shouldn't be I, here. You shouldn't be no, here. No, not after not after the where I went to. No. I've not, I've not even gone there yet, have we? Yeah, yeah. You mean how, you, you? How far down the rabbit hole? How far right down the rabbit hole was it? You, I mean, when you talk about life stories and life lessons, how far down the rabbit hole were you? Uh, to the point where when I was, I think when I when I when I went to that detox, I had my seizure, saved someone's life. Um, I think that could have led on to like some kind of post traumatic stress. So, so it's so it's been said. Um, um, that was actually in the detox and then because this I won't go too much in the detail but I kind of got onto this guy who was going to harm himself and then yeah they found him and he'd, he'd injected uh, insulin um, insulin overdose he'd made like a prison uh, make it, made a pen uh, made a, a made a pin out of a pen a needle out of a pen like, which is an old prison prison trick I heard and try to kill himself uh, insulin overdose and I don't know how he just walked past me and I kind of picked up on it and I wow. don't know how anyway I'm, um, I told a staff member mm. and uh, they didn't believe me they were like because my head I hadn't slept for like it's about 16 days obviously like an hour here and an hour there I was tripping out I had psychosis but I just knew something wasn't right and mm. I was adamant I was like someone has to check on him and he kept saying no focus on yourself do your own detox and I was like look he's, he's in the end I was like, I just said it I said look I don't know how I knew. I just said, look, he's going to kill someone or, or kill himself. And they were like, has he, has he told you something? <coughs> I was like, no, I just, I just know. Mm. Anyway, they've got to act on that. They've got a duty of care. He went upstairs, uh, came back down, and he said, yeah, we've, we've just found him. There's an ambulance coming. Found him with a, with a needle in his arm. Um, insulin <sighs> overdose, yeah. And, 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 it, and apparently, I, and I checked. After last time I spoke to you, I'd mentioned it. I checked with my key worker from back then. I speak to him now, you know, got quite a good relationship. And I checked with him and just to make sure, because my head was all over the place, if it actually happened, you know, because I was questioning myself because yeah, it sounds yeah. a bit far-fetched. And he said, yeah. I mean, it was off the record because that can't go yeah. out. I'm not going to mention the place where I was at, but it can't kind of, you know, it wouldn't look good in the books. But yeah, he, uh, he tried to kill himself. And in fact, my, my key worker said I saved his life. If I hadn't done that, it would have been, because he did a check on him and he was facing the window and he thought it was all right. But he was like, nodding. What? Yeah, so he, he'd already gone. And then the ambulance came, took him to took him to A and E, and they brought him round. And then after that, the day after, I think it was everything because I, I literally <laughs> that's when my head went. And I I came round and I was telling people I was God after that. That's yeah. Yeah. My, my my mind went because I was like I was just everything I was saying was coming true. It was like you know like um, is it Bruce Almighty or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's going to happen. <laughs> and, and it's because I was so aware. I was giving that many scenarios. I was speaking that quick. Every scenario was happening because it was because it couldn't not because I was just pointing out the obvious, you know. I was watching TV, it was like natural disasters. And I was like, come in here and watch this. And the staff are coming in. And I'm like, watch what's going to happen, watch what's going to happen. And there was, I said, something bad's going to happen here. And the film's called, I'm not, not going to say that, but it's called Natural Disasters. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the documentary. And then there's a landslide. And I was like, see, I told you, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's recorded like 15 years earlier. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, see, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's called Natural Disasters. Like, you watch something's going wrong. Yeah, yeah, but I thought it was just me. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was just me. But there was loads of weird stuff happened then. Um, like predictions and things, and then it's like synchronicity, and then this is the path which led me to literally lose my marbles. And um, I had my seizure, um, got took to the hospital. I remember walking through the hospital, and all the staff. I've said this to you earlier as well. There's all the staff were there, um, all the nurses in the, in the blue uniforms, and I was walking down the corridor. And I, bear in mind, I had I sliced my head open. Head had been sliced open here where they found me and had a seizure. Um, I was covered in blood. I had, like, Jesus Creeper, like, flip-flop sandals mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. like, woven kind of <laughs> random ones. 
just in my boxer shorts and a long dressing gown and my hood up. And I was skinny as any, it was like 11 stone too. I'm like nearly 17 stone now, so you can imagine. And I was walking through and then all these, the nurses started parting like that. And me thinking I was God, I, I thought it was Jesus then. I thought it was the parting of the sea. And I was walking down I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I was thinking they're all doing this for me. And I was, oh my God. I remember seeing a psychiatrist, so I'm going down the rabbit hole yeah. now. <laughs> I remember seeing a psychiatrist and they were saying, so who are you? And I'm like, um, and I saw my key worker saying, go on, tell them. And I'm thinking to myself, do you know, can you hear what I'm thinking? Mm. And, I, and I remember looking at me and smiling, so I'm thinking, shit, you can hear what I'm thinking. So I'm saying, right, I'm going to tell him. And he goes, go on, go on, be truthful with him. And I'm like, I'm God. And the, the one went, <laughs> she was like, the psychiatrist said, see, see you're God. And I was like, and I looked at him and he was like, shaking his head. And I was like, no, no, I'm not God, I'm, I'm Christian. And then they were like, <laughs> and, then, and then they were, and then, because I was trying to, I was kind of playing them, but I, I thought that they actually, they knew I was God. Mm. I thought I was God. He just gets, he gets like really, really kind of twisted. But yeah, and I thought they were playing mind games with me, but literally I was going mad. <laughs> wow. So it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a weird situation. Anyway, I actually got out of that one, um, managed to blag it, um, told him I was really who I am, <laughs> my real name, yeah. got out of there. And then I think that's the night I went to, to I'm not going to go down that story. That's, a bit, <laughs> that's for another time that it's a bit, a bit, a bit of a long one. But yeah, after that, I got sent home and then um, went back to the detox, uh, spent a few nights in the hospital, went back to Blackpool um, on the train with the key worker. He had had enough of me, but as soon as he dropped me off at the station, he just got on the train. He just walked around and got straight on the next one and sent me packing like my mum was wow. there. Um, went to Blackpool, Vic. Um, got took in there, intensive care. I was in intensive care. I think I was for a night and then they sent me home and then they took me back in and then I went into voluntarily went into the, the psychiatric ward and then that was it then. I thought I was got I thought they were all undercover coppers in there. I thought it was just some kind of mad mad kind of game. And then the, yeah, the rest of history I was in and out, high secure units and all sorts, wow. <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it was a bit of a roller coaster, a bit of a wild time. Was that the last three years then that became the last three years? No, it was it was th it, literally that was three months. That was three months from Going to the detox to coming out of the psychiatric ward right. was three. It was a three-month spell, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone. It was really? the, the horriblest. Like literally, when you're in there, um, yeah, I stopped all the medication. Like they put me on a really high secure unit in it's South Port Ormskirk, and uh, and I, I refused the medication. And when you're in there, you're kind of a statistic. Um, they just want to. Well, I feel they want to just uh, kind of sedate you, and then mm. they just they can just leave you. The job's done. <clears throat> they tried to give me, um, what was it, Valium? Valium and nitrazepam. And, uh, and I'd just come off. I was like, even though mm. I didn't have my head properly, mm. I was like, I've just come off like loads yeah. of that. And I, you know, I'm not going down that path. Even though I wasn't right in the head, I knew I wasn't going back to drugs. Mm. So I refused it. They, they gave me this antipsychotic. They gave me, they gave me Olanzapine, I think it was called. Quetiapine, there was loads of others. And it was like they were trialling me on all these things and literally it had a, 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 it counteracted with me because I wasn't actually mad. I was just going through like some psychosis mm. coming off of drugs and it sent me proper radio. Really? Yeah, and then, uh, but anyway, I, re I got, I somehow managed to find, find it in myself to, to refuse the meds. And they were saying, right, you're going you're gonna to refuse, you're going to, you know, we're going to have to tell the doctor. And I was like, well, tell the doctor. I said, let me see what I'm taking. This is me still being crazy, by the way. I kind of knew mm. I wasn't going to be taking stuff. And they showed me the tablets. Uh, sorry, they, they went to show me, and they said, oh, we've not got a box. I was like, well, unless you show me what I'm taking, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking you know, I'm not stupid. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, well, you're going to refuse. And they were trying to make it like it was a bad thing. I was like, well, what are you going to do? I'm in, I'm in like the nut house. You know, mm. <laughs> what's the worst thing that can happen? This is like my worst fear. Anyway, the, uh, they said, right, we're going to mark you down as refuse. So I think the third day of refusing, my head started getting clearer. And then they moved me from the, the PICQ, which was like the, the high secure. I think it was called the PICU back there, to the SIPU, which is like a mixed, more, less intense ward. Mm. The, the PICU, by the way, a camera above your bed, from what I remember, a camera at the side of you, no laces in your trainers, shoes outside the door, what? two items of clothing. Um, in one of the rooms he took me into, they said, look, if you misbehave, you're in here. It's just like a metal room, like you see in the, yeah, on the TV, yeah, yeah, like no, Hannibal Lecter kind of stuff. There's a metal bed, toilet, metal, like metal walls, uh, and glass across the front like a goldfish bowl, and wow, that was it. Wow, wow. And uh, they said, "This, if you misbehave, you're in here." Like it was like I'd done something wrong, and I hadn't done anything wrong. I was, I was proper confused to hell, you know. Yeah. I didn't know. I'd just got to get off drugs, and I was in a psychiatric unit. 
And I thought it was all the game. I thought it was all, it was yeah, all yeah, the show because yeah. I didn't know what was going on. Anyway, they moved me. When I refused the, the meds, after three days, they moved me from the pit queue to the sit queue. From there, I still refused the meds. Within a week, they moved me from the, that, that place voluntarily back to Blackpool Vic. I was in Blackpool Vic for two weeks. And then um, they had like a consultation with loads of students uh, and the main, the main consultant and a few other like doctors. And the, uh, they had a bit of like a, um, they had a meeting, they, got, they called me and they asked me what I think's happened and what I should do. Mm. Excuse me. And I said, they, they said, and how I've been treated. And I said, well, to tell you the truth, I said the F word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, I think you're fucked up on a major scale. And, uh, and I think you should just let, the, this is when I had my head had come back together because mm-hmm. I stopped taking the medication, which I, I didn't need. Obviously, yeah. they don't really know that, yeah, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I said, right, I think, I think you fucked up on a major scale. If you just let the drugs get out of my system, um, I would have been all right. You know, you should have let it ride its course. Yeah. Anyway, I, I said my piece and I said, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed how it's gone, but I think I've got my head together now. And then they looked at each other. Boom, signed this bit of paper. She looked at me and said, right, you're free to go. Wow. And that was it. That was that. Was it. And they, they overturned, from what I believe, they overturned the section. I think it was like a nine or seven month section and it's quite hard to, so, I've, so I believe it's hard to get it overturned, and I, I kind of flipped everything on its on its ass, and then I got out, and I never never took any medication or anything since. They said I was bipolar, I was schizophrenic, I was, and then uh, and since then, they've uh, I actually went for an interview for something I can't remember what it was, and uh, they said you're totally coherent, you, you look us in the eyes when you're interviewed, mm-hmm. everything, and they said you you you've got no characteristics of anything except uh, you know. A, I don't know what the right word is. I'm not using normal, but <laughs> normal wow. person. A champion. champion. I'm, I've been completely spellbound by that whole I'm out of story. breath with it all. Yeah, man. <laughs> wow, way to go. This is a life of many lives, and all you can do is be a champion of your your own... Uh, be your own hero, isn't it? Hero. You can be your own hero. <laughs> hmm. And how's life now? How's life now? Are you are you happy creatively? Are you? Yeah, I love I love I love what I do. Yeah, you're fucking big on characters, man. <laughs> like your detail, the detail is so sick. Hmm. I see it everywhere. Like you've really got it up going in Blackpool, man. Yeah, what was the one? There's the. Um, it's the it's either it or it's Chucky. There's, there's a Chucky and a, and a Pennywise. Yeah. yeah, they're both next next to each other. Yeah, so sick. Yeah, on the on the on drummers on the joke yeah. shop on the on Central Drive by the, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's good. It's good to paint there actually because I get speaking to pe- you know real people. Yeah. And uh, Central Drive's one of the main kind of roads, isn't it? That's... Yeah, yeah. On the on the way into Blackpool. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's talked about well, but like I say, there's, there's, there's good and bad everywhere. But there's mm. like I say, there's a lot of. Um, there is a lot of drugs around. Yeah. There's a lot of drugs all over everywhere. Yeah. But around there, you know, I used to see them scoring when I'm painting walls and they'll, they'll come across and none, none of them know my story. Mm. But then first of all, they'll be standoffish and then I'll, I'll after a while, I'll get talking to them because what I try and do is, I know I'm painting, but I kind of just want to give them a bit of a, a, bit of a torch, a bit of a, mm. a, bit of a, a spark to, to see inspire a way out. Them. To see a way out, yeah. And then first of all, they're, they're very standoffish and they don't, you know, they don't know what I'm about. They just see me as kind of just a regular a regular person who doesn't know shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't know what they're doing. And then when I get talking to them and I see them like the, the, the scoring like day three, day four, and then they know I know what they're up to and I'll just say something like, you know, how long have you been on it? Just literally chuck, break the ice and then they'll start talking and start trusting trusting us and it's kind of wow. like, and that's what, it's, it's good to kind of ho- hopefully kind of push people in the right direction and say, look, give them a bit of my story mm. and then um, something to, to kind of hold on to so it's like, so. Trying to inspire them to. That's like one of the realest levels of street artistry I've ever fucking heard. The <laughs> fact that you're talking to, to addicts and people that have gone through the same walk as you, or rather mm. you've gone through the same walk as them, and you're helping inspire them just by being present and having conversations with them. Yeah, but you don't really, but the thing, I, I kind of realised, I noticed this after, because I've done it a few times, you know, especially when I paint in Blackpool, and, uh, and I'll see people, I can't help myself, I've got to say something, it's mm. weird, but it's like, not like, I won't force myself, because I know everyone's very, you know, the trust issues, but say like, uh, when I was painting another wall, and there was a guy, and I mean, he used to get his, um, <clears throat> he used to get his sleeping bag, and his, and his, um, and his like cardboard box, and stuff, you know, sleep, and, he, and he used to walk past us every day, and every night, so I'd start saying, if you, if you help us move this scaffold, I'll give you a couple of, you know, help you out, you know, trying to help mm. him out, but you don't want to kind of intrude on their, it's their, their time, their thing, it's what they know, so, mm. And it's kind of like I don't know. It's 
it's a it's a hard one, but it's kind of doing it with kind of kick kick gloves. But not I'm not do I'm not going out to do it. Mm. It just I just I can't help myself. Mm. I just it's it's, in, it's, it's there because I've been there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not, not on the streets. I just say I didn't I didn't get to that point. Luckily no. enough, but yeah, but I've, I know I've been close. <laughs> Support from a from an outsource point of view from a family or relative like you're saying you never will hit the streets you're never in the streets this comes from a certain place that i'm kind of dealing with at the moment in my own small way like i've as i said to you um over dinner i was like yeah like i've i've stopped drinking now mm. do you know what i mean and every credit by the way yeah thank you brother uh, and you know it's not it's not an easy thing there are days where i'm just like anxious but one thing that a lot of my friends said to me, they were like, you know about graph, why don't you do some graph? And funnily enough, even just even on a rainy day, just jumping on a sketchbook and doing something. Yeah, filling that space. Filling the space. How important is that? How important is that for people that want to come out of and rehabilitate themselves creatively? I, I think that's massive because when I, when I kind of lost my mind, um, that's, that's, what, that's what got me. That's why I'm here doing mm. what I do because I started sketching um, and painting. I was, I was inspired by the, the, the guys in the... In the detox unit in Manchester, and they, they, had, they were doing them um, to get anyone, so anyone can people who don't think they can draw whatever into it. They had the projectors, you know, the old school projectors. They were projecting mm-hmm. like acetates um, onto the wall, and then people were doing canvases, and that's what kind of got me started again. Mm. Because you know, obviously, you're in a mess, and it's, it was easy to, to get the lines and then fill in. Um, yeah, but but then that's what kind of. From that point is what kind of just inspired me just to carry on, and it's and it's it kind of rejogged me. Um, but there's a lot of other people who've, who've never even there's a, there's a guy in Blackpool actually I know who's uh, Matt. I'll just mention his name. I won't go, go into detail. Time, Matt. Matt. Time. And uh, yeah, he, he he I don't think he'd any, done any art before, and he's been through a similar story. And then he started painting, and that's it. And that's his that's his outlet. He, and he loves it, and he's you know he's he's doing great at it. He so, just paints, and it's but he's like the, I think I said before, you know, the arts. It's just it's massive, and then, mm. and if it's ever taken away, it's like you know it's criminal because yeah. that's it's such an outlet for you to. Well, this you're finding now. That's that's it. Mm. It's, you, you, it's, you, <laughs> watch his face. This is yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. going to be a war for you in Blackpool, isn't there? There is also some people though, and at least this comes from a very, um, a very. Uh, What's the word? Affectionate place. I know that it's not intentional. But when people see you changing, there's a level of resistance that comes in. You're trying to um, prescribe yourself with a a creative boost, something to distract you, something to keep your mind on something. But people can sometimes see that as like obsessiveness and like, well, come on, come on, do something else. It's like, no, no, you don't understand. This... I yeah. just got to do this because this is the only way that I can stop this itch. Yeah, I get, yeah, and it's and I think that's it's it's like they say any, anything too much of anything's a bad thing. That's what they say. Mm. It's like a, a like a treatment term. But I think I think it's like life in general. It's balance, and it's like and it's how far because because say if you used to like a drink or I used to like drugs or whatever, and it's and it's that extremist. It's what levels you'll go to and knowing when you're like because you could you could paint too much, you could sketch too much, you know, you could. Um, you could do anything, you know, too much of anything is a bad thing. So I think it's just finding that balance. And I think you will, first of all, you'll throw yourself into it to keep your, as we were talking earlier, to keep your mind focused. Mm. Because we're like an empty mind. It's idle. It's idle and it's, and it's dangerous, especially like where, where, where we've been. So, yeah, I think if I could say anything, going back to that, I think the, the main thing in, your, in anything, in anyone's life, people who've been through shit or not, mm. it's, uh, it's balance. Balance is the key. I think balance is key. Balance is for real. And that's something to seriously take away. On the subject of balance then, and your artistical approach, your can control, and all these different layers in which you create your pieces, because I know you're very modest about your, your, your lettering, but I just have to add the choice of colours, the can control, everything that you've got going on in your productions. That doesn't look like the kind of person that does things in like maybe two or three hours and forgets about it for a week. This shit is like some stuff that's definitely been... been thought of it. Yeah, you've been, been over, overbalanced. Yeah, yeah, a bit <laughs> overbalanced. Come on, that is... It's cold. Like, yeah. like, how how do you begin creating a lifelike uh, character on wall? Uh, for, always from a photograph. Yeah. Obviously, always go from a photograph. Um, I used to, I used to, I'll, I'll let into the secret. I used yeah. to, I used to kind of trace the out, the, just the outline. I used to trace the outline because I know I can sketch it, but it takes up time. Mm. 
Attendance valuable, obviously, when you've mm. wasted so much. So um, I did used to, did you, after the using the, the light boxes, you know, to do the things on the wall, I got lazy and started sketching the outlines. But then, because I knew I, knew I could do it, and I knew I could sketch them up, I could grid up. So the next thing was learning the techniques because I was because I missed out on a, like 14 years. I'd seen mm. all these people from back in the day absolutely smashing it, mm. come up with these pieces, which I never had my eyes open. I, I literally saw kind of bubble letters back in the day and some really good pieces, you know, from the book. So nowadays, like all the, you know, this this realism stuff, mm. which I'd never seen, I'd never saw, I never saw it evolving. Mm. So, and then I thought that when I volunteered in that event, that's like, all right, I want some of that. So I just literally, I was like a sponge and I was pecking everyone's head. Yeah, the really? So I was literally going around asking everyone, saying, how do you do this, how do you do that? Where do you get your cans, where do you do it? And so it, good, I was yeah. hungry for it because I was thinking, well, I've got nothing else. Mm, yeah. So that's it, and I need something. And I've always had this, but it's almost like yeah. a four-wheel drive now. It's upgraded. Yeah, well, the, well, the passion was... The passion disappeared with the with the drugs. And then and then it's, it, I volunteered in that event, and I got hungry for it. And I really didn't know what I was doing. I just used to... I'd mess around with stencils as well. <laughs> yeah, dare I say it. Yeah. yeah, I messed around with stencils just because I wanted to produce something which would be of some kind of quality. Yeah. You know what I mean? A finished piece. Whereas... Now I just, I don't think I'm, like I said this to you before, I don't think, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be because I still don't think I've got my, my style down. I still think I'm learning like, as we always are. Mm-hmm. But um, like lately I've started doing a few, changing things up a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes I work with like design, you know, friends designers or we do like a collab and they'll come up with something and we're you know, quite good on the, on the, on yeah. the computers, um, on, the, on like Illustrator and Photoshop. And they'll do something which I, I know I want to do, but I can't create it that quick. I don't want to spend like, it's like mm. we haven't got the time anymore. I don't want to spend like 10, 12, 15 hours doing a piece and then think, oh, it's not going to work anyway. Yeah. The composition's wrong. So I'll, I'll kind of pick their brains, which I've started. I am teaching myself. I, I, I could do a bit now, but uh, I've got Procreate. How far? Yeah, she has a really good point. Yeah, because you've got Procreate and you've got these things now that... You used it once. Right. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're, in the, you're in the mix with it, but... There's a lot of influential components that can make something look super real on screen, transferring it onto the walls of different matter. How far, this is, this is where I'm leading to, yeah. how far through a piece where you know you've spent this much money on cans and shit, <laughs> that you get to a point where you're like, oh, this is fucking up. This is unfolding. This doesn't look <laughs> like it's on screen. I've done it a few, I've done it a oh, few yeah. times. Down, down, down the tracks, you know, the, the, the old place. The, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the location, spot. the secret spot, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, I've I've done that and I've I've kind of given up or I've spent too long on it and I've just been like right that's it. But and then people have been saying, I remember one piece I painted, I painted with this guy. I'm not going to say, I painted this guy. I took him down to the secret spot, mm-hmm. and uh, he's an amazing artist. And um, and I was doing something aside and people, I was just watching him and I was kind of like mm. thinking, look what he's doing and look what I'm doing. And, I, and that's when I just, I just like, down my tools, I was like, no, Saturdays, I, I, can't, I can't do that. But that, I think that was a learning curve because yeah. I think I jumped in it and I didn't prep and that's why I prep now because mm. I know what I'm doing. I mean, some people just have a natural gift, especially if they've been, they've been painting all the time and I've kind of been absent and they just go up. Uh, some people are just literally two hours making amazing, amazing productions. Mm. Um, but I do need that, that prep. I'm a bit OCD around my prep. So, really? and, if, and if you don't come out after that, I just throw my hands up and say, right, it's not worth this time. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it out of the bag next time. But I did used to kick myself hard if it was. <laughs> I was competing against myself all the time. Hey, that's the way to be, that man. Yeah. Nothing beats that. You know, being your own competitor. I stress myself out with it because I'm always pushing myself. Um, I do obviously I do this for a job, paint for a, paint for a living now. Um, paint for a living. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good getting getting to like the festival I've just painted. What an experience! Yeah. The, the people I'm meeting, the networking, um, yeah, and just just being inspired by people, creative people, and 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 having having a focus, like you were saying earlier, having a focus and something to mm-hmm. something to and a passion and and a, and goals as well, mm. like like yeah, goals are where you want to be, just some drive. That's that's about it. Yeah, things things are good. Well, this ain't gonna be the last time we're gonna be chatting. Again, you know, it's... I could do, I could do you a series amount yeah, of Jack you know, and Always I've got for you. <laughs> any shout outs you want to give? Because we will we we will hold fire to a part two. We have to. Could in case I forget. Yeah. Well, in case not. Don't forget. In case I I this slipped my mind. That's, yeah. That's the right thing. Because you know this is a this is an ongoing process, isn't it? Like creatively and and living a life beyond the therapy, beyond the. The art is the therapy. The art is the therapy, yeah. right? And this is something that we've... This is one of the main, 
you know, messages on this particular episode. Definitely. It's like graffiti, street art, creative art saves lives. And, it do, and it do, yeah, yeah, it yeah. does. And I can, I can, <laughs> that's it, I'm, I'm living proof, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I, w- I don't know what I would have been doing. I'm not saying it's wholeheartedly that, but yeah, with the tools I've, I picked up along the way, definitely the art and the passion is, and, and the creativity which I left when I was like mm. 15, 16, mm. it's just, it's just put me right back on where I sh- hopefully I should have been. Even though I'm playing catch up because some people are smashing it. But <laughs> yeah, but that's part of the, that's part of the That's the drive, yeah, yeah, that's the drive. It's like kind of, kind of inspire for hope for more. Yeah, I'm with you, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so it's all about. Um, any any shout outs you want to give? Yeah, okay. I'll shout out to Moz. Um, mm. Moz local local guy because he's one of the guys I started started out with again. I think big shout um, out to Inky as well. Oh yeah, Inky. Yeah, Inky's Inky's been. Yeah, he's. I, I wanna, shout out to Inky. I pecked uh, pecked his head because I was. Uh, I was with him when he came over here painting sand scene spray. Mm-hmm. I think I bit his head right out. Yeah. I, was still, I still wasn't 100% then. I think I was under my an hour going at him. <laughs> Where do you get your cans? Where do you get your caps? How do you do this? How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, loads of, but there's so many others. Foundry, Porsky. Um, I'm going to forget loads. Quebec, I've been painting with lately. Nomad Clan. Um, come on, come on. There's, there's, there's so many more. I've got to say, shout out to Melissa, my girlfriend, who's in LA at the minute looking after her mum. Um, who else? Mum. Yeah, Mum's that? always there. The family. Um, Your nieces and nephews. Yeah, nie- two nieces, but they, they won't be seeing it. Maybe, maybe a long way down the line, they'll be like yeah, seven, old, yeah. seven and ten, but hopefully, you know, they'll understand a bit. They don't really know anything because I, I changed before that. But yeah, um, there's going to be other people that I've, that I've not. There's going to be other people. That'll be for I, part two. Say, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, I've got to say, the the hive the hive lot around here because they've been they're really good for the arts around Blackpool. Mm. Um, the list could go on forever. Robin Robin Ross. If I don't give him a shout, out, I'll get I'll get a slap. Um, and of course, Dirty Blondes inside. Come dirty on. Blondes, Dirty Blondes, Jake and the crew. Yeah, yeah definitely because they they've been really good. We're I've opening done... the doors to, to 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 the scene here in Blackpool. This is how we're doing it. We're yeah, this is, this is this is this is HQ DB HQ. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm gonna. There's gonna be more. There's gonna yeah. be more. But uh, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get told off. There's mm-hmm. just. There's just so many people have inspired me along the way, and 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 been there. And I know as soon as I put this mic down and you turn that <laughs> off, this, I'm gonna you're gonna be like this. Peace. Yeah. So anyway, oh, I'm, I'm apologizing. <laughs> I'm apologizing now for for because you, you know who you are. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And uh, you know there'll be reference points going out throughout this podcast. We'll we'll be sure of that to keep adding uh, elements in as we as we talk. If you if you're watching, if you're listening, big up yourselves too. It's been a fucking pleasure, man. Yeah. It's been good. It's been it's been great, man. It's been good. Yeah. I can't believe I. I, I I might have sped up, but... Yeah, but you've got... <laughs> I, I, I have a thing of going 100 mile an hour, don't I? So yeah, that's all right. Hey, listen, it's incredible. a journey. It's all in a journey. That's what the motto, motto of this episode is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, the mighty second one inside the place, Blackpool's finest. We are out like that, all right? Sharing is caring. Don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend. And of course, television app is in effect, all right? Cheers very much. Second one. Nice one. Peace. Peace.